So guys, Monkey Bacon here from Soccer Monkey Development, and sorry it's been so long since I posted a video, but I've been seeing that we've been getting a lot more support, and I'm happy that I'm actually helping some of you guys, helping some of you guys out. And, um, okay, so today we are going to be using these fantastical variables that we made in the last tutorial, and we're going to be using them to start our game. And so let's start out and let's make our own variable. And to do this, it's basically the same as using... Uh, default variable, but uh, it, in the same way that it's the same, it's also a lot different. So what we're going to do is type function, like all the time, and then after that, it's going to be the name of the function, but we get to choose the name of the function, right? It's almost like a variable. We get to choose it. It's whatever uh, kind of like is easy for you to remember, and sorry, I'm kind of out of it, so if I don't explain things too well, I'll try to re-explain them in the next tutorial if you guys leave a comment and tell me. Okay. Um. So in this function, we're going to draw the player. So what we're going to call this is player underscore draw, or anything else that has to do with drawing the player that you can remember. Because you're going to need to do, uh, yeah. Something that reminds you of drawing the player should would be a good function name. Okay. So let me explain making our own functions. Functions are almost like variables in the sense that here. Let me explain this. So Inside of here is going to be the core mechanics of our function. So inside of here, we'd say, you don't have to type this, but we'd say, you know, draw the player. And so what would happen is wherever we use this, so let's say we use this variable, right, or this function name, player underscore draw, inside of, oh, those aren't supposed to be there. I filmed this twice because last time I did, did a terrible job. Okay. So we use player underscore draw inside of love draw because it's a drawing. It's drawing something on the screen, and so when we put that there, it's the exact same as type. All this stuff inside of here is being placed right there. So we could just type everything inside of here right there, but it's just looks nicer, it's easier for you to understand. And if that doesn't make sense right now, I will try to explain it better if you guys tell me, you know. Um, but what I mean is basically, the basic part of it is that this is a variable, and it's set, the, the name of the function is basically a variable, and it's set, it equals everything that's inside of here. So whenever we use this variable, it's going to be doing what's ever inside of here. And, uh... Yeah, so inside of here, we're just going to draw the player. So first, we're going to set the color, because you always want to set the color before you draw something, before you display something. I keep calling it drawing. It's not... Okay, we're going to set it to 255, 255, 255, because we want it to be white. I explained that in a previous tutorial. But, um, because I actually have an image for my player, it's red, and I set the variable player.pick equals... Okay, and we're going to be drawing him. So love.graphics.draw. Player dot pick. Oh yeah, perfect. Player dot x and player dot y. Okay. So here we go. We have the whole function. How easy was that? Now, since we already put this function inside of love draw, it'll already work. So now, when we start up our game, it'll go through. It'll say, okay, it requires player dot lua. So we're gonna go to player dot lua. Oh, he has a function called player draw, and it draws the player on the screen. I'll keep that in mind. And then it'll say, okay, well, I see it there, now I know I have to draw it. Do whatever this function does, and it draws a player on the screen, because it says so inside of player.lua. And I'm just trying to help you explain it some more if you guys don't understand it yet. But basically, a moving, functioning variable. Va very, uh, variable. <laughs> um, so now I'm going to run my game. You guys don't have to, but if you want to. Um, here we go. Opens up, there it is. There's our fantastic red box. And the next thing, we're gonna be making one more function in this tutorial, but it's gonna be it's gonna be moving the player. So we're gonna I'm gonna call mine function player underscore move. And this is gonna be moving the player, which I explained player movement in a couple tutorials ago, or in one of the tutorials before this one. And um since this is using math. Well, ah, maybe I shouldn't explain that yet. So, inside of here, we're just going to be, you know, moving the player. So, I, what I was planning on for this game is you move with the arrow keys, and then you shoot with the WASD. So, if you push up on, if you push W, you shoot up. If you push
push S you shoot down A left D right. But if you want it to be the other way where you move with the WASD keys and you shoot with the arrow keys, then keep that in mind because this is going to be moving and I'm going to be using I think I'm going to use the arrow keys to move. So uh if you don't understand what I just said, then just go with the arrow keys. So we're going to test if up is down and if you're using WASD, then you test if W is down. And that means that we have to subtract from the player's Y position, player.speed, and I explained this all in the last tutorial, so I'm just going to, you know, kind of stall until I'm done typing this. Uh, I got a new SciTech Eclipse uh, 2 keyboard. It's freaking amazing. Uh, it's actually the first mechanical keyboard I've got, and I love it. Also, I was thinking about starting some daily blogs. If you guys think that's a good idea, leave a comment. Like I said, I'm really happy that I'm actually helping some of you guys out. We've been getting a lot of, you know, support and contact from people and gaining some more subscribers and it makes me really happy. So I'm going to definitely keep making tutorials. I'm going to try to put some more up very often. I think every two weeks, I'm just going to try to pump out as many tutorials as I possibly can. And, uh, and then just take one week off and then the next week, you know, just keep pumping them through. Every other week, I'm just going to try to pump out as many tutorials as I can. And, okay. So, oh my god, I just, you guys probably caught that too, you guys like, what is he doing? Okay, I typed in the wrong set of keys, and it's going to be down. Okay, oh my god, I, I, god, I shouldn't talk while I'm coding, this is bad, but I'm, it's, I'm come on, give it to, okay, <laughs> enough salt. We have our control set up, so since this is a math, based function. You know, it's not drawing anything, it's using completely math. We're going to put it inside of function love.update. So it's going to be player underscore move, or whatever you called it. And just keep in mind, I'm pretty sure I explained this, that love.update can, cannot display images. It's meant for, you know, doing math, moving players. Yeah, uh, math, pretty much. And love.draw cannot do math, but it can display images. So you have to keep those kind of separate, in a way. Uh, so you couldn't make a function that draws the player and moves the player because it would not You'd have to split them up between Love to update and love to draw So now we have a function that moves the player and a function that draws the player So now we have them on the screen and we can move them. So what to do is going to go through is going to say okay I'm going to read through player.lua because it tells me to go to player.lua Somebody who is honking their horn? Okay. <laughs> it's gonna go to player and it'll say, okay, he, he has a function that draws the player and a function that moves the player. I'll keep that in mind. It goes through, sets the background color. Okay, now I know that when they push down an arrow key, move in that direction. And now I know to draw the player on the screen. So, I'm gonna run my game. You guys don't have to. I know that was a really long talk. I probably shouldn't be talking so much in my tutorials. But okay. We're gonna run it, and here we go move the player, and that's freaking amazing. So, this tutorial we made our own functions. In the next tutorial, I'm pretty sure we're going to be doing some basic collision, so he won't be able to move outside of the screen, which will probably change later when we do camera movement and all that, but I know that sounds really confusing right now, but it's all, that's probably actually easier than what we just did in this tutorial. So, I hope this helped. And, um, yeah, just think about starting some daily blogs, like I said. And if you guys think that's a good idea, then I'll post it in the description. And also, like I said, I'm going to be trying to pump out as many videos every other week as I can. And, yeah, I hope these, I'm just super happy these tutorials are helping you guys. I'm going to definitely keep it up. Um, yeah, so like, favorite, comment, subscribe.